what is going on everybody welcome back to another video thank you guys so much for tuning in today i'm on beautiful lake hartwell in the fall and i'm going to show you exactly how i break it down i'm going to give you how i break the lake into sections what i'm thinking what my process is what i'm looking for or look at an online map and just see again what i'm looking for before i even get on the water and giving you guys some tips and tricks just to break down a lake as fast as possible. So stay tuned and I'll walk you through this. Welcome to the office, everybody. As mentioned, I'm gonna take you guys through how I break down lakes, just my mindset, my thought process, and specifically how I broke down Lake Hartwell for this specific trip that I did. To start off, I always try to break down the lakes that I'm visiting into thirds just to create a more manageable chunk uh, to break down. And normally on lakes, depending, depending on how the lakes are set up, you can break them down from you know north end, south end with a middle. You can break it down with east arm, west arm in a middle. You can break it down by, uh, which I like to do, especially in the southeast, the way the lakes are set up. You can break it down by the rivers, the north end, and then the south end. That's kind of how I I fish normally, or at least break down the lakes. Uh, again, the, a lot of the ones around here, that's just how they set up. It's very easy to cut off the rivers, cut off the north end of the lake, and then there's, keep the south end of the lake. And generally speaking, I've fished all over the country, and most of the time, and I say most because there are exceptions to this, but most of the time, the biggest fish in the lake consistently are going to live in the deepest water. And so wherever that is on the lake, that's where I like to start looking and just work outwards from there. I'm not a huge river fisherman. So for me, it's not my strong suit. It's not my strength. So I'm kind of going to avoid those. So right off the bat, as you guys can see here, looking at this map, I'm on Navionics, just so you guys can follow along here. But I went ahead and just broke off the rivers. And I have some experience in the rivers. I actually used to go to school at Clemson, so I lived way up the river. Uh, so we fished up there a little bit. You can catch big fish up there absolutely during certain times of year, particularly in the springtime when the big largemouth and... Uh, up there, it's a little dirtier. So mostly big largemouth are moving up to stage and spawn in those areas. So you can throw like a square bill or spinner bait up the rivers and get big bites in the springtime. But for the most part, the rivers did not produce a big bite. So again, this leads me back to just my experience across the country. The bigger fish tend to live on the or in the deepest water. And Let's jump into it here. So as I mentioned, I start off completely by splitting Lake Hartwell into thirds. The first third is the rivers. I'm going to cut that out for this video. That's not where I was looking. It's not where I focused my time on. And then if we zoom in here a little bit, I took this second section of the lake around these islands. I believe that's Anderson Island. As you guys can see here, which is where the, the river kind of forks. And everything, here's Green Pond Landing. That's where a lot of big tournaments go out of. Everywhere from this bridge, and I'm kind of circling it here, all the way down to right around this big point that sticks out. I'm actually not sure of the name of it. But right around these islands, that's what I would consider the section number two for this lake, or middle. It doesn't matter. Uh, and then you have the south end of the lake, which is section number three right here. So how I broke it down is, like I said, I was going to fo focus on sections two, the middle, and sections three, the south end of the lake. Just deeper water, generally speaking, that's where the biggest fish are going to be. So that's where I focused all of my time. And I didn't have a ton of time here. Uh, a couple days I went up to visit for uh, the weekend. So I had a couple of days to fish and uh, just wanted to maximize my time on the water. So what I did first is started looking at points down the lake and anywhere there's a point that sticks out towards the river channel and you guys can see so here's one the river channel swings right against it this point comes way out here this is a little deeper 
And uh, here I can go ahead and drop this. That's got pretty deep. So let's go to, I don't know, 30 feet. 30 feet's a good number. But now you can see these points kind of stick out close to the river channel. This looks like a good one here. These are kind of some sneaky ones, uh, just kind of stuff that you'd maybe miss. But you guys can see here, Lake Hartwell is full of points. And so there's really no rhyme or reason to it, uh, what makes a good point, except if there's good brush there and good bait nearby, the fish are going to be there. So literally, this is how I started breaking down the lake, is I literally just started driving down the lake and hitting points. Here's one over here and started graphing them with my big motor, just driving up and down the sides, marking any brush pile that I saw. If I saw fish on it, uh, then I'd mark it as, I like to use different color waypoints. So I use dots for my brush piles and I use different colors for whether it's an A, B or a C spot. And that is all determined, again, it's just my little uh, organization system in which it tells me one, is there a lot of fish there? And two, are they good quality? And if the answer is yes to both, it's an A spot. Uh, if it's maybe got, you know, a couple fish, but they're big, that's a B spot. And then again, just working all the way down. So I would give it a colored dot just to help me understand when I go back through and I have a couple hundred different dots all over the lake, I can see which ones were, again, A spots, my best chance of catching big fish and numbers. So that's how I started off when I was here. The fish were still in, I would say, a late summertime pattern. A lot of the fish were starting to move shallow. Uh, we caught them all the way up to, I would say, 15 feet out over brush. And they were definitely still over brush, but this was a couple weeks ago. And just fishing the lake that I live on, or I live close to around here, I would say that Hartwell normally fishes very similar to that. And recently that lake has been turning over and it's been very, very difficult to fish. So for me, I would start to focus on points again, but leading into the mouth of creeks. So here's a great example right here. Here's the main, the main creek channel and off here you have a side creek. Well, right here you have this long point right here and then this long point right here. 100%, I would start looking at these points for schools of fish. They're going to be transitioning from their summertime offshore brush pile uh, patterns, and I would believe that they already have transitioned and started to move into these creeks, and all they're doing is just following the bait. In the winter, the bait's gonna be going deep in these ditches, and the fish use these, both the bait and the game fish, use these creek channels as highways. So you can kind of look and just visualize in your brain, it's kind of like a highway. Right here, again, perfect example, two long points right at the mouth of creeks, I'd start looking there. And what you can do is on these major creeks, like this one right here, or I would say more prominent creeks, if these, the fish are not on these two points, go to the next one. Here's a little sneaky one. I, I like these little sneaky points, uh, more of like the smaller points. That's a nice drop off right there, pretty flat. That's a sneaky one I'd check out too. But start working your way into these creeks with just like, again, a one, two, three pattern. So the same way that I broke down the lakes into a one, two, three into categories, you can actually break down the creek channels as well. And what I like to do is break down the creek channels the same way that I would the main lake in that I assign the front third, number one, the second third, number two, and the last bit where I would say the creek's coming to an end, section number three. For this case, because of where I believe the fish would be at, I would focus on areas one and two, which are the middle to the mouth of the creeks, closest to the main lake. And again, because the fish are in transition, there's gonna be fish all over the place, but I believe that a majority of the fish, especially on Lake Hartwell, the way it fishes, 
are going to be at the middle to the mouth of the major creeks coming in from the offshore, like I said, summertime patterns. And that's where I would start my search all the way down the lake. And all I would do is just stay on my big motor. And like I said, I would graph these points, maybe fish a little bit just to build your confidence and just to see if there's fish or not. But that's how I would break it down. And I would just repeat that all the way down the lake, looking at, like I said, mouth of creeks specifically. And so as I mentioned here, moving in, uh, if they're not on these two points, maybe the next one I jump to, this could be an interesting one for sure. A little bit of sneak. Uh, then I would move in maybe this. You can see the creek channel kind of runs right against it. That might be a really good morning schooling point right there. And then kind of moving in here, maybe this hump, this bar right here might be a good place. Uh, but just start working your way into the creek, focusing on, let's see if we can find another one here, focusing on the main lake points to start off and then moving your way into the creek. So here's another little sneaky point. But Lake Hartwell has, I mean, literally hundreds of these kinds of points that I'd be looking for. And I think the, the fish are going to be set up on two things specifically. Uh, I mean, two things, one thing specifically is points. They're gonna be on points. I, a majority of the fish are going to be on points this time of year. And that is both rock points and then long, narrow, or I'm sorry, long, flatter points with brush on them. So I would target two types of structure. Again, this is all to, for, for reference. This is how I would break down the lake today if I was there. So this may not be right completely. This is just my mindset on how I would do it if I was fishing there this weekend. I would be looking at rock and brush on shallow long points. So again, just to recap what we covered, we have Lake Hartwell here. There's probably good fish in the river. Like I said, that's just not my strong suit. So I would avoid that. I would focus on this middle area here is a great place and it's pretty close to uh, most ramps up here in the middle. And then the south end, again, that's where the bigger fish are going to live. So let's run down here and I'll give you an example of something I'm looking for down here. Here's a major creek coming in. You see these really long points. I'd probably try to tuck in uh, out of them a little bit. These look pretty interesting. These points sticking out here, um, maybe something like that. Uh, just again, there's so many points. There's no wrong answer. This one looks really good. I like how this point is really long. It's got a road bed over it. It's super flat, which is good. Oh, here's another one right here. And so that allows those fish just to sit up there and gorge on shad. That's what they're doing. They're following shad in. So again, that's what I would do. Focus on areas two and three of the lake or the middle and the south end to catch your biggest fish. And then look at the mouth to the middle of the creeks. Baits that I would be throwing right now to start off i again i'm not up there at this moment but what i would be throwing to look for these fish moving in i would be looking at my forward facing sonar if i have it if not it's not a problem at all like i said use your big motor to find both good active schools of fish and bait if you find bait the fish will be there just fish a couple points in that area and the fish will be on one of them so it should be pretty Pretty easy to find a group of fish. Getting them to bite, especially if the lake is turning over, is difficult. If you are fishing rock, the first thing I would start off with is a crankbait. That's been working pretty well near me recently. And then I would move to moving baits on the points. That can be anything from a chatterbait. It can be a jerkbait, maybe a soft body jerkbait, like a fluke can work pretty well. An underspin. Uh, what else, what else would I throw? Maybe a spinnerbait if there was some wind and the profile of all these baits, you want to scale down a little bit just because a lot of the bait that these fish are targeting right now is super small. And so I would say scale down on your size and keep your colors pretty natural. I I'm a big believer. The water around here is pretty clear generally. 
So go natural as you can, or maybe some clear colors. If you do get overcast conditions, uh, white or bone works pretty well, something that stands out. But those are the types of baits that I would throw to start off. And then a, a sneaky bait. I, I, I shouldn't be giving this away, but I will. Uh, a sneaky bait is a rooster tail over points and schools of fish actually gets bit really well. Just an old school rooster tail. It's kind of like a finesse spinner bait, I think, in my opinion. The fish don't see it a whole lot, so you might want to try that. Uh, but that should be pretty good. Oh, maybe some swim baits. Uh, the swim bait really hasn't worked a ton by me recently, but that doesn't mean it won't work on Hartwell. So uh, try those baits out. Try those locations out. Let me know what you guys think. If, uh, if you guys end up catching fish on uh, anything that I've talked about, let me know in the comments down below. I would appreciate it. But again, hopefully this helps just break down a lake. It doesn't matter, again, whatever lake this is. This is the same approach, whether when I lived in Texas, uh, South Carolina, Georgia, wherever it may be, this is the same approach that I always took to break down a lake. It just mentally, in my mind, uh, makes the the area more manageable. You know, if you say, hey, I'm going to commit to this area for two hours and just break it down and then go to the next area and break it down, you'll start to put together the puzzle pieces and you'll start to understand, hey, this area of the lake is fishing a lot better than that other area. And then you can cut that area out altogether and start finding more places in the area that was working and just repeat that across the lake. So again, when I was there to give you guys an example, we found out that the fish were on brush, uh, pretty pretty clear there. However, they were only really biting, well, I should say, around area number two. So this area right here. And so we ran all the way down here and we had good brush and good schools of fish, but they just were not firing. And these fish on our way down were. So we went back and sure enough, we started catching more fish and some pretty good ones too. So we started running, you know, every single point that we could find in here and down the lake and just hitting it. And again, you're not going to be successful on every single point you hit. This lake, specifically Hartwell, is a run and gun style of lake for the most part. Again, these are all generalizations for how the lake normally fishes for most of the year. But it's a run and gun style lake. So you're going to have to hit 50, 60, 100 spots in a day. And uh, especially now, golly, especially now in the fall, I was just out fishing today and uh, for, for an, a couple hours and you've got to hit so many different places and switch up so many different baits. This is the time of year to keep a bunch of rods on the deck and just keep everything honest. But those baits that I told you should be a great start. Again, hopefully you guys learned something. Hopefully this helps you guys break down the lake just like I would. And this works all across the country, as I mentioned before. Hopefully you guys got all of that information and that really helps you break down a lake quickly, whether it's even your home lake or a new lake that you're going to. I find that, again, splitting it up and just taking it one piece at a time and taking one puzzle piece and putting it together at a time will really allow you to be efficient on the water and allow you to catch more fish. So hopefully you guys enjoyed that one. As always, if you guys have any questions regarding this content or you just want to know how to break down maybe a lake in your area, how I would go about doing that, please post them in the comments down below. And thank you guys so much for tuning in. It means the world. Please like the video, share it with your friends, subscribe to the channel. That really helps me out a lot. And I will catch y'all in the next one.